Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the Heart of God, delivered from the throne of grace, to give you hope and encouragement for your daily living. God wants you to know that He loves you, and that He has His absolute best plan for you each day, and that when you turn to Him, He will show you all the good things He has for you. The enemy tries to keep you occupied and distracted from seeing all that God is doing good around you. Because he knows if you see the goodness of God in your surroundings, in the busyness of your day, that you will start seeking God more and paying less attention to the distractions of the enemy. God loves you. And today we want to talk about how to stop being perpetually uneasy anxious and worried about your life by simply trusting in Christ. If you just follow the the holidays and with all the preparation and decorating and celebrations surrounding the Festival of Lights or Christmas, then you know the that energy that you have is a little ran down. You may be feeling a little down. Maybe somebody didn't come to see you at Christmas or for the Festival of Lights. Maybe a loved one isn't with you this year. Or maybe somebody has made you feel uncomfortable or unhappy in this season of year. I have good news. All those things are distractions from the enemy to keep you from looking toward God. God loves you. And he sends his ministering spirits to minister for you and to minister to you so that you will know God and know him in a special way because you're his dear child. Now, if you haven't been born again of the spirit of God, at the end of this message, you can hear a simple way just to trust Christ and leave all the results to him because he loves you. And you'll find that when you trust Christ, that he makes all things work together for your absolute good because you love him who loved you first. So as we look at every good gift given from above, we have to look first at the best gifts that are given to us. And the best gifts are those gifts that have eternal meaning, that have continual and constant renewing of our mind, that calls us to hope and to believe the best and not the worst, to look at the good and not the evil, to see the success that is before us and not the conquering of the enemy trying to prevent us from going forward. I know that many days you can sit there and it's like you turn and your shadow is on the ground. And it covers it for a little bit, and then it doesn't cover it. It's almost like an ellipse that covers the ground by your body being a shadow. And it turns dark. But one thing you have to remember is that the sun is shining on your body, even though it looks dark where you're looking. Where you're looking is not where the sun is. The sun is on you, and it's radiating through you and in you. And it cast a shadow because you are its very person that cast the light of God. In front of you is light and behind you is a shadow of where you've been. Close the chapters in your life that are behind you and look to the light of the chapters before you. Put away those Old chapters that you keep bringing up and the enemy keeps bringing up before you. Those things that distract you and keep you from living your very best before God. It's not the things that God wants you to focus on, but it's the things that you're focusing on. And he tells you, let those distractions go. Just put them away. Many times I see people in this time of season getting ready for a new year. And they don't know what God's going to do. They make plans, they hope things, but they don't know what God's going to do. And they're just trusting that God somehow will help them make it through. But I'm telling you that when you focus on Christ being the central focus of your life, then you're going to see something good happen for you. You're going to see that the God who 
spoke in the beginning his word, who now speaks to you his word through his spirit, actively and operatively working in you. He says to you that just as it was in the beginning before all time, that Christ was the word and the word was with God and the word was God himself. The word of God lives in you now. Your body is the temple of the living God. His word, Jesus Christ himself, dwells in you. And because Christ is present with you, you know that God is present with you. And because God's very own spirit is present with you, you know that God is with you. God has given you his life and given you his light so that you will shine before men. God never planned for you to live in this fallen world by yourself. He knows it's impossible that you need God in every situation and circumstance. I know there's people that I've spoken to and people that speak and ask, why do I need God? Well, have you looked at your life? Those things that aren't doing well and those things that are doing well. If you have things that are going well, it can change in an instant. But the opposite's true. If you have things that aren't going well, they can change in an instant. God is in control of all things at all times, and nothing is too difficult for him. He's the one that fills you because you're in Christ with the greatest gift imaginable, his divine presence, Christ in you, the hope of glory. God has made you alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ, and then he fills you with the richest measure of his divine presence, who literally supplies your necessities, which is your true advantage in Christ. In this world, God has trained you to offer up continually at all times through the Lord Jesus Christ the sacrifice of praise, that is, thanking him and acknowledging him in all your ways and circumstances and calling on and confessing and glorifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When life seems more like a drudgery than pleasure, then pay close attention to God's many blessings all around you on a daily bless, on a daily basis. Look for the large and the small ones. That opportunity to just somebody's nice to you. They smile. They open a door for you. That wouldn't normally happen. Uh, somebody at the store that just comes out and helps you and shows you where you need to go. Or if you're in business, something that's happening for you, somebody just helps you unexpectedly. And they show you what you should do and what you need to do to correct or to do the things that you need to get done. God is always working around you. And when you seek him and rejoice in the Lord, then you will know his help and deliverance. Because he will show you his blessings. And you will rejoice in his goodness because he loves you. The key is never calculating without God. I remember years ago, decades ago, that a good friend of mine told me that, you know, you can't go anywhere without Jesus. You can't lock him in the closet and go do whatever you want to do and then come and open the closet up and let him out. No, Jesus is present with you right now. Wherever you're sitting, whatever you're doing, Jesus is there right now. He's there. The very spirit of the living God is with you presently now because God is omnipresent and he can be right here speaking through me and sitting with you at the same time and because he is you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can count on and rely on him that you can know that he will take you through each difficulty and he will bring you out on the other side and bring it to pass for his glory you see God is for you And he is with you. Who can be against you? He tells you, listen, cast your burdens, cast your worries, release the weight of them on me, and I will sustain you. I will never allow you to be moved or made to slip or fall or fail. Trust in me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge me in all your ways. And I promise I'll direct your path. Is what God says to you. When you cast your burdens and your cares and your worries upon the Lord, this is God's exhortation to you. 
that he will be with you and that he will calm you and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding and that he will answer all your prayers according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And he will make a way where there is no way. He will make rivers in the desert and he will sit there and cause you to live in the high places of the earth. He'll cause you as a sheep of his pasture to rest in green pastures and to eat from those green pastures and to also lead you by still water so you're not worried, anxious, or afraid. So cast the whole of your cares over on him because he cares for you. Cast all your worries, cast all your concerns once and for all on him because he cares affectionately for you. He cares watchfully for you. He cares that you are taken care of and that he's thinking about you. So you know that your cares are, and anxieties and worries and concerns that distract you and separate you from focusing on the very benefits of Jesus' resurrection, that he is working to allow you to see Christ more in all his fullness. And Father, I just thank you that you are. I thank you, Father God, that you know that worries and anxieties and concerns, that they distract and separate us from focusing on you. They cause us to look an opposite direction because they're trying to take our immediate attention away from you. Like right now, with I hear sounds in the background and people needing things, but your time with these people that are listening to you right now is most important. You want to know, they want you to know that they love you and that you want them to know that you love them. And I thank you that Christ keeps us from our emotions and our inner being from being fractured because you're our healer. You heal our hurts and you heal our pains. You heal us mentally and physically and emotionally. And we just thank you for that. We thank you that you are sustaining us, Lord Jesus. That you're making your sufficiency available to us. So that we have the fullest measure of your divine presence. And the richest measure of your blessing upon blessing for us and toward us who believe. And we thank you, Father God, that we just hold up this substance. This sufficiency of strength and nourishment and life that sustains us to you. And ask that you would bless it to the nourishment of our body and bless our time together in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that when it comes to you, that you give us a full measure. That you give us your strength and your grace that's easily adapted to the duty and the trial that's before us, that we may honor you and bring glory to you in all that we say and do in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that just as David was assured by you that you will sustain him, that we are assured by you that you are our helper who never leaves us nor forsakes us, but always accomplishes those things that are necessary and important for us to do things that are different in a world that is not so different from 4,000 years ago. The world is still hurting. The world has hurting people. And I thank you for caring for them, Lord. I thank you for watching over them. And I thank you for leading those members in the world across our paths so that we, just by an example of our behavior and our conduct and our actions, be a messenger of God. And I thank you for filling our hearts and minds with your peace. I thank you for giving us your word to speak, a right word in due season, even when we don't know what to say. That your Holy Spirit gives us the very words to say. We just thank you for that. Therefore, we don't fret or have any anxiety, Father, about anything. Because you care for us. And in every circumstance and in everything, we just offer up our prayers and our petitions. And we make a definite request of you with thanksgiving. And we let you know what our wants are. And then you exchange your desires for our desires. 
You change your thoughts, exchange your thoughts for our thoughts. And because you do, we know that having the mind of Christ, that we can relax in that tranquil state of soul, just assured of its salvation, and then fearing nothing from you, that we can be content with this earthly lot which you have given us. And we know that your love and your understanding, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We just humble ourselves before you. We bow our head and our knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, who is there for us, even when we don't know you there. But you're there even before we pray, even before we seek you. You're for us, and we just thank you for it in the name of Jesus. I just thank you, Father God, that as we humble ourselves before you, and we cast the whole of our cares, all our anxieties, our worries, and our concerns, once and for all on you, that you care for us affectionately, and that you care about us watchfully. So we just commit our ways to you, Father God. We just roll each care over on you, we trust in you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Where we're confident that you who began a good work in us will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now I just thank you, Father, for loving us. I thank you for taking care of us, while for watching over all that we set our hand to do. I thank you that when we're afflicted and needy, that you are mindful of us and you are our help and our deliverer and you do not delay. I thank you, Father God that we commit all our works to you because we need to know your thoughts, actions, and plans so that our works are established and succeed. I thank you, Father God, that you are for us. I thank you that you're with us and that you take care of us and you cause your face to shine on us. Therefore, we just thank you, Father God, that because we cast our cares upon you, that we don't continually perpetually be uneasy or anxious or worried about our lives because you are in charge of our lives. You're the one who ensures that all the things we have and all the things we need are provided for us. And we just thank you, Father God. We can look at the birds of the air and we recognize they don't soil, they don't reap, and they don't gather into barns. Yet you, Heavenly Father, you keep feeding them, and you supply their needs. Are we not worth more, Father God, than they? And, you know, what can we really do by worrying, Father God, or being anxious? We can't add one cubit to our measure, to our height. We can't do anything. Father God, without you. So we just thank you that we're not without you, but that you take care of us and you watch over us and you guide us in the way in which we should go. And we just thank you now, Father God, that because you're with us, we can sit there and say, God is for us. God is on our side. And we will not be afraid because God is working all things out for our very best. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you're encouraged as we start walking into the new year and know that God is with you, that this enemy tries to distract you and keep you from hearing his word. He knows that you'll be changed when you hear the word of God. He knows that there's life force and life action in the word of God. And he wants you to be filled with all the fullness of his presence and operating in his word. Now, trust God, look for him in all the affairs of life, and just simply say, thank you, Lord, when you recognize something that he's done. Give him thanks in the smallest of things, and then you will see that he's doing greater for you than you can imagine in the bigger things. In Jesus' name. Well, until next time, remember, God loves you, I love you, and Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen and amen.